שלום לכם, תודה שאתם איתנו. Hello, thank you for being with us in the New Life Educational Series with Dr. Michael Lyman. Hello, Dr. Lyman. Hello, Nitsa Mazos. We want you to be with us here today. We're going to speak about how we can make our lives new, better, a life where we feel connected, concerned for one another, loving one another. It sounds like a dream, but it's not really a dream. It's our vision for the new Israeli society, that we'll get up in the morning with a big light in our eyes, each of us in his home, with his family, and all of us together as Israeli society. Why not, actually? If you think about it, that's the good life, and that's what we're trying to learn from Rav Lightman. Each time we take a different aspect from our Israeli culture, the Jewish culture, and try to see it in a new light, to advance each of us to a new life, a connected life. The subject that we want to talk about today is one of the most central symbols in the Israeli, in the Jewish culture, which is prayer, a person's prayer. It doesn't have to be a religious or secular person to pray. Our heart prays all the time. We want to open this place and learn what we need to ask for, how to ask for it, and how we can cause our prayers to get feedback and we can attain what we want. Needs to open up this wide subject, the world of prayer. The world of prayer is something that we do very intuitively. Each person, it doesn't matter what age, I'll tell a personal story about that in a minute. A person prays, a person prays, he asks, he wants to just pour out what he has uh, inside. Sometimes he does calculations with himself. But he's in a place of uh, prayer. I can tell, tell you a personal story. I think I never told anyone this story, even my parents. When I was about 10 years old, I had a certain story where I felt for the first time that I want to ask something from God. Like there's somebody guarding me, and I want to ask him for something. And I also told him that if it happens, then I'll know that he exists. And ever since, I'll be in touch with him. And it, he was there. It really happened. It my demand was realized. And what happened ever since was that every night before I went to sleep, I would go to sleep, and for 10 or 15 minutes, I would have a discussion with him. Maybe it's important to say I am from a completely secular family. Nobody ever spoke to me about prayer. I never learned in religious school. It just came to me by myself, naturally. And I think it's something that lots of people can talk about, because it's for sure something that characterizes a lot of people. Then I started to have this uh, dialogue with him all the time, and I learned a lot from that. So maybe the first question is, in general, <laughs> sometimes we have a thought that prayer has to do directly with religion. So first of all, what is a prayer? First of all, a person feels that he's turning to someone that it's as if there's someone to speak to, a dialogue, that if I'm like this and you'll be like that, then I'll be like this and you'll be like that. To make a long story short, there's like an exchange going on. I'm asking you something, what do you want from me? I'll do it if you do something, if you do what I want. In short, it's like a trick, but no matter which way we look at it, we feel that there's some power above us, destiny, upper force, nature, God and geometria is nature, it's one and the same, it doesn't matter what, but that there's something above us with which we can get into a dialogue into some kind of deal. I don't mean something dirty and gross. I mean uh, be a human being so that there'll be someone to turn to. And this is in each and every person's heart because we don't know what's going to happen next what he's re preparing for us, especially. It's a disconnection from the future, close, far, it doesn't matter, but from the future. That is very, very, it weakens us. If I really think about myself and the world to the extent that we're strong, how strong we are, how capable we are, we are very, very weak 
were very, don't know how to put it. We are disconnected from the power that controls us, from the force that controls us. And we're totally at the hands of uh, fate. Because another second, and I don't know what's going to happen. My life are that same moment that I'm living, because the next moment is unknown. And that's what brings a person the feeling of time, that there's a past, present, and possibly there may not be a future. It really weakens a person. And it works in our subconscious. Even though we do all kinds of things, everything we do in our life is actually how to live the future, which exists, that, it, that it'll exist, that we'll live, that everything will be great. A person wants to fill the future or to delete it or delete his uncertainty about it. And that's what our entire life is about. <laughs> because if we would live with this feeling that there's no future, it's unknown, that it's finished in the next moment, we wouldn't be able to do anything at all. Because what I do now, it's for the next moment. And if the next moment might or may not exist, there's a problem here. And this brings a person to weakness. And from weakness, he reaches some kind of prayer, prayer in each and every person's heart, <coughs> that each and every person prays that there will be a next moment, because he wants to continue in his existence and fill the next moment with a certain thing. We never live the moment, but live the future. And we have to know that it will exist. And that if there's nothing in the next moment, we're always living for the next second. <laughs> Therefore, prayer is the most natural thing in the world. Lack of knowing the next moment advances a person in life. And to the extent that we advance more and more in the development of our ego, in history, evolution, that we advance by our will to receive our ego, our desire, which is our foundation. The foundation of man's nature is always growing to the extent that the desires are growing and they're wider and and emptier. In accordance with that, my request in the next moment is more and more actual. It's more serious. Let's say if once upon a time I lived with a little piece of land with my family, so I had, I knew more or less what's happening. Everything was in my hands. Today, when there's so many systems and I'm dependent on a thousand uh, people, who knows where I am? Police, government, Medicare, everything, banks, uh, God knows what. <coughs> To the extent that I apparently exist in a more in a safer environment, it's more and more the opposite. It's uh, unstable. It's uh, hanging in space. There's many people <coughs> that no one knows what will happen in the next moment. And suddenly the system we're seeing now in this crisis. And then it causes people to have a lack of knowledge, a lack of options. Therefore, it's no wonder that even though we got far from the formal religion, that we have to do this, this, and that, but for dependency in knowing the future in prayer, meaning being in connection with our fate. We didn't get far away, and just the opposite. 
If before 30, 40, 50 years, someone would have told me that in 50 years on TV and every channel, We'll have a future uh, astrolo astrologers and people that tell the future. I wouldn't believe them. I wouldn't have believed them. Today, it's everywhere, every channel. There's some time, a certain time, a set uh, prime time. Uh, somebody sits uh, for an hour and explains to us the stars, how they influence us, what our destiny is. But in 2012, it's the year of, um, what did they call it? Tashmad, all kinds of, every year, it's like the last year. We see that this thing is very important to the public, to the masses, to many people. I spoke with lots of great people, politicians and uh, economists, very big. I can mention their names. They all asked me fateful questions, what will be? Yes. Uh, through my dealings, they'd always ask me, what does it say there in the Book of Zohar and all kinds of things, <coughs> all of them. Pre precisely, the, more, the higher up a person up, he needs more support, he needs more foundation. And he feels that truly, if little people think that up there somebody knows something, then up there he, he knows that he doesn't know anything. And then we see that it's felt in the masses. And from year to year, we're more and more dependent on nature. Uh, all kinds of phenomena that we're feeling from nature. If some hurricane comes, we see how small we are. If there's some volcano erupting, everyone's afraid that it'll block off the sun and then we will be buried here. We will go into the Ice Age again and God knows what will happen. And a tsunami can wash us from one end of the world to the other. We see that our powers are very weak, very small. To protect ourselves, we're not capable. And nature, the upper force, it doesn't matter what you call it, he is controlling. <coughs> Therefore, the prayer is in a natural manner. It exists in everyone in a natural manner, because a person always lives from this moment to the next moment, which is uncertain, which is unknown. You mean you can summarize and say, if I understood, that prayer in general, maybe the first need for it, comes from a desire to connect ourselves as something small to something bigger, precisely because of the fear that we don't know what the next stage is. Yes, and that's exactly what differentiates a person from a creature, because a creature doesn't have a prayer. They're completely dependent on nature and don't think. They don't think about the future. <coughs> because they're in the same system, like past, present, and future, glued to whatever's happening. And we do feel the past, present, and future. Therefore, for us, the term of time, the aspect of time gives us uncertainty in the past. We know how, really, let's look back, let's look back at history and see how it developed the subject of prayer. <coughs> the subject of prayer started coming about after the destruction of the first temple, because until then, people used to gather, come to the temple with their sacrifices, they used to do some ritual together, and the moment the temple was destroyed, we were left without a place to, it's as if our connection with that same force that you explained before, it disappeared. In my opinion, that's not exactly what happened. That's what people tell us. That's in history. I understand that's what people tell us, people that don't delve deeper. 
כל ה... All the... תכלית. purpose of creation is to bring a person to, to develop to be a person. That he came out of the uh, animal level to the monkey level and has to reach the human level. We got out of the monkey level, but we haven't reached the per human level yet because we've developed in our human desires just in a more and more advanced manner toward aggression, uh, control, power. <coughs> we developed in that. And now we're at the peak of that development, this egoistic development. It's even starting to become round and bring us the next format that we're dependent on one another. And then in a direct egoistic manner, taking advantage of one another, we can no longer exist like that. And if we want to see the good, advanced world, the successful, thriving world, we have to be connected together in the correct manner in mutuality. And for me, with each passing day, it's clear that the world needs to be round, that the relations need to be round. I spoke about it a lot, and I see that today they really write about it and understand also from inside. Without studying, people have started to understand it from what's happening around them. The cinder dependence is so great. The planet has truly become so small and round in front of us that, like in a family, we need to calm things down and try somehow to live together. And without that, our future is very unknown. Now the question is, if it's like that, what's the future? What's our future state? The future state is that we need to be close to one another, participating in a friendly manner, mutual manner, in serving one another. If we reach in this state, then we will live in a more or less equal manner, we will look after all of humanity. We'll bring some uh, righteous uh, regime, some justified regime. But the nature that's becoming revealed is obligating us to reach this. The crisis as it was, was felt now and it's still continuing. Its foundation is in old Babylon. We spoke about it. We're there for the first time it was revealed. And they didn't know what to do with it until one of the priests of Babylon got up, Avram, and said, Everything that's happening is happening because of the global crisis, the whole society, that's what he means by global. And this situation requires from us that we will begin to get along between us like brothers, like friends, like, like one family. Meaning not go according to our ego that's erupting and reaching proportions that we never knew before because <coughs> in the past everything was connected and good until this ego erupted in Babylon and they remember it. They were as one people. And then the eruption of the ego and the Tower of Babylon came. And Abraham said, we have to go back to that same form that we had before. And only a small part of the Babylonians heard him, and not everyone. And this part disconnected itself from Babylon and went with him to the land of Canaan. What is their work? <coughs> How can they connect themselves? If in their heart of each person there will be a feeling that we all belong to one family, in the heart there will be a feeling that I must relate to the other like I do to myself. There's no one else. We're all parts, they're all parts of my part. I have to, in my heart, bring a feeling that we are one family. And when I say family, I mean in the positive manner, 
in the manner of uh, unity, connection, not families like uh, that kill each other, that, like we hear today almost every week. <coughs> It's clear, right? We see that the future of the world, also from Babylon right up to today, and from today to its future, it's only through correcting our hearts. Correct the heart. To make a person's heart soft, to make another person's heart soft, to participate so that he'll feel the other person like he feels himself, that, that the masses will be important to me just like my children are. We have many ways to verify this. Don't do it to others as you wouldn't want done to yourself. Love thy neighbor as thyself. We all have to be guarantors to one another. What happens to somebody else, it's as if it's happening to me. What happens to Oren can come to me and demand from me. Because if we're guarantors, that's how it is. That's it. His fate is my fate. But in order for us to exist in such a society, I need to correct my heart. How do I correct my heart that it will want to live in this kind of society? I need to speak with my heart. <laughs> I need to soften my heart. I need all the people around me to also influence it with love and with a bit of fear and with a bit of sympathy and judgment, all kinds of ways. I'm interested in this. I want to open my heart to influences from the environment. I want the environment at the end of the day, I want that my heart to soften to such an extent, to be so soft, really like, um, like dough, not dough. Dough isn't that soft. Like there's um, those toys for kids, those really soft, uh, like uh, cotton wool. I want my heart to be like that. And then I'll be able to feel with it. I'll be able to bring the whole world into it. Truly, it will be in connection. It will absorb from everyone. And everyone will have hearts like that. And then we can truly build one heart from that. This is the future format of the world. But in order to do that, I need work in the heart, which is a prayer, is called. What is a prayer that I turn to my heart all the time and check it, soften it? <coughs> I'm always working on it, so it'll be a bit more sensitive, more open, more absorbing, more uh, radiating <coughs> outward, like it works with my body, that it will work like that with all the other bodies. <coughs> In... Um, Absorbing and um, not with blood, but with feelings, mutual feelings. Absorbing and emitting. We're talking about prayer, and and that's the prayer. That's the prayer. Let's make some order. I started by saying that in my feeling, a prayer is turning to some force that's greater than I. And now you described a prayer that is more between people. I never saw a force bigger than me. I don't know it. If I know it, then I'll also feel it in my heart. And in nothing else, only in my heart. Where else do I feel something? Meaning in my feelings. The heart is all the desires, all a person's desires, which these desires all together feel something. And through what they feel, they draw the world from me. 
What do I feel? I feel something from sight, hearing, uh, taste, touch through these senses. They reach my general desire, which is called the heart. It's not the heart. The heart is a pump. It's a mutual hump, uh, pump. It pulls and pushes. But what's happening here, my general desire is called a heart, and what's felt in me is called the world. And I have to feel in my heart the true world. My desires all work only in a selective manner. In a selective manner, that I only feel what's worth it to me. <laughs> just like a little child. He only sees what interests him. Anything else, he just, uh, he might even bump into people. He's looking for something. He doesn't, he's in his own world. The bigger he gets, the world gets bigger. So we need to open our hearts. Not that we'll have some filter around the heart, some cover that only what's good for me and worth it for me will get in. But rather that I feel the world as it truly is. Why? Because I don't know really what's good for me and bad for me. I was maybe educated a certain way. I got some kind of education. I got a perspective. And truly, the good things that exist, I don't uh, recognize. To open the heart means to make it as wide as possible, to absorb the whole world, all of reality. Therefore, this is our work. The more that we widen our feelings, to widen them as much as possible. That's what we're missing. We thought, we think, we, nobody thinks like this anymore. People already understand that it's not like this. We thought that we could add to our egoistic heart all kinds of uh, tools, means. And then, through these means, we will discover everything that we have in the world. We built, we built, we built lots of things, telescopes, microscopes, colliders, everything. And today, it's as if there's nowhere else to continue, because we've reached, apparently, a border of how much we can use our ego. <coughs> and there's nothing else. We built such a huge filtering system that we only want for our own good, that we can't uh, absorb anything else. But at the border, we realize that there's something else, just like in Einstein's theories or the quantum, quantum physics. We see that there's something else, but that we're not touching it. And the main thing is that in that, we begin to feel in our lives, in the general crisis, that we've reached a dead end. And it's all because all of us have blocked hearts, and we're not capable of opening the world as it is. Human society is closed before us. So it turns out that we need to open our hearts, and that comes through prayer. What is prayer? Speaking with yourself. You don't need to speak to anyone else. A person speaks to himself, that he's softening himself, that is, he's convincing himself, that he's verifying why he feels like this and he to feels otherwise. Even in the Torah it's written, it's, there's these recommendations in a very personal manner. Love thy neighbor as yourself. Don't do to your friend what you wouldn't want done to you. Don't uh, hate anyone with your heart and on and on. It's all connected to a person's heart. And afterwards, there's also uh, recommendations for the connection between people, also to be connected together as one man with one heart, to be in mutual guarantee, mutual responsibility, love of brothers. <laughs> 
meaning there's the personal correction of the heart, and there's the general correction to connect the corrected hearts. They were connect, corrected individually. So I have a question rising up now. What's the difference between psychological work that a person does with himself, that he makes calculations, and this work that you called a prayer? A person needs to know <coughs> the trend of the world, where the world is headed, to what form, what form a person needs to advance to according to the plan of nature. <coughs> we need to carry out this plan whether we like it or not. Nature won't compromise it, will push us to that. Therefore, as much as I know, psychologists, psychology, etc., they don't understand the theory of development. Therefore, they don't recognize it. That's a big problem. Even though there's lots of things that could help us there, even though psychology for the last 20 years feels that it's in a great crisis, but that's what I'm missing in psychology. If it would equip itself with the knowledge about the development of the world, development of man, then it could continue to exist onward. The only thing that a person's missing is to know that I need to reach this format <coughs> to be connected with everyone <coughs> in one heart, in one desire. This makes me friendly and equal with everyone and with the nature around me. And this is how I reach a state where surely I'm advancing <coughs> in the knowledge from this moment to the next. And then if I know that the mo next moment is like this moment, and I determine the next moment because I want to do good to others, because I want to advance with more harmony with all of reality, then the next moment is open for me. I begin to rise up above time. I don't feel a difference between now and my future. <coughs> for me, all these moments are open. They're laid out before me. That's what a person can reach. And the prayer is, is truly work in the heart. That's what it's called. That a person softens his heart <coughs> toward his fellow men. You don't need anything apart from that. We also dealt in the past with, like you said, the temple, all the work in the temple, and that's precisely what we dealt with. For that, we came three times a year to the temple. That's why a person used to sacrifice sacrifices. Korban is from the word close to sacrifice his heart to others and to feel along with them the single power, the upper power that permeates in the connection between everyone. Because if we're talking about the upper force, the creator, the Kadosh Baruch Hu, it's also something that dresses in the, the general. From me, I sit. That's why the Assembly of Israel that gathers all these people that want to be together. Israel means yeshar, straight to, straight to the love of love and uh, bestowal. So it turns out that then, before the destruction of the temple, we had the correct inclination to correct, connect between us. What is the Khurban of the Beit Mikdash that we stopped looking after? Uh, your neighbor. Can you explain to me how love thy neighbor as thyself, which is between people, and what's the connection to God? God is what we have uh, in between people. What is the upper force? What we have between people. Inside I, I said, the upper force does not exist. It doesn't exist above. It exists only in the connection between us. If there's a connection between us, we shape the upper force. 
we shape it and we build it. He made me that's how it is written and the opposite if we don't connect then even though there's an upper force and that's the general nature also what we had before there were people we've only been here a few million years not longer and before there wasn't nature there wasn't uh, the universe there was an upper nature, there was everything. But if we want to discover it, if we want to discover our future state, we need to know that the future state is to be connected with all the entire reality in a nice mutual manner. And all this is only through work in the heart. Now, after the destruction of the temple, when we're no longer thinking about love, uh, loving your fellow man, that's the reason for the for the crisis. The crisis that's called the the destruction of the temple, and it's not really the house; it's the <coughs> it's the temple in our hearts. That's what a social crisis is about. That's what was destroyed then. <coughs> <laughs> and at that moment, we went out to exile. That's it. We had no justification for existing. As Israelis in Israel, that group of Abraham that determined for itself that it exists only to carry out and develop the issue of uh, love of thy fellow man, it stopped looking after it. Stop looking after it, and it no longer exists. Like all the nations of the world, it was thrown out to exile. <coughs> In the middle of exile, what do we pray for? We pray that we will, for redemption. What redemption? Redemption that will feel good, <coughs> that I'll have a bit more in my pocket, security, health, and nothing else. Food, sex, family. It's every person's natural aspirations. You said it's like you said it like a negative thing against Israel that we had before, where we were always concerned about the connection between us. And each person would make sure everyone had. Because for a family, and now each person looks out for themselves. It's not called us uh, praying for re redemption. No one is going to do that because Gula, redemption, is when we want to have the strength to carry out love thy neighbor as thyself. There's no such thing. And then we reach a state like today where this crisis is being revealed in the whole world and the whole world is beginning to discover and he doesn't know yet but he's on the way to discovering that that's what he's missing, that this crisis is bringing him gradually to the correct recognition, that he needs to correct his ego, not to hate it. That's the point, at least, at least. In the meantime, don't hate your friend, don't to others what you don't like done to you. All those things we'll have to go over. And we'll hope that more and more people will hear it about the integral education through which we can correct a person's heart faster and then to not be advancing through blows of our mismatching uh, nature to that same law, love thy neighbors thyself, but rather we should um, get approach it with love and understanding and have through, through prayer, the work in the heart that will soften our hearts until it becomes like cotton wool and bring us all together. Just as I look out for myself, and this is how we reach a complete prayer for everyone, that we're all looking after one another. You mentioned before that there's two places. You said there's the person that uh, makes his own personal heart softer. And 
וזה מביא אותי אל ההיבט הבא בדיון שלנו, של תפילה בציבור. It brings me to the issue of uh, praying in public. It's very felt in prayer, the issue of praying in public. There's some things you can't even pray as a single person. What's this whole emphasis, the so significant emphasis and differentiator between a person's prayer and praying in public? Why in public is it, it <coughs> such a big deal? Because it's a matching nature that we're all, the fact that we're connecting to one another, we're connecting all of nature. Inanimate, animate, vegetable can all connect all of us together into one piece. <coughs> the wolf and the sheep will get along, the little child also next to them. It has to, there has to be perfect harmony in all of nature, at all the levels of nature. And that's us, that we have to do it. And what about praying in public? In order to reach this mutuality, us humans need to understand that at our level, we need to build our society in a mutual manner, that each one is looking after everyone else. That's what our root is. That what happens to me is happening because everyone's thinking about me in that manner. And that anything that happens to someone else is because we all think of him like that. And this network is becoming more and more revealed. Now it's becoming revealed in the world of financial dependence. Uh, dependence of the mutual force, soon you'll see dependence on thought. It's crazy, but it'll happen soon. If people didn't think about you good, then you won't end well. Then what are you going to do? How are you going to check it? How are you going to discover it? How can you force them? What kind of king can force his government, not even the whole world, will think good. With what power? But we're so connected to one another that it will become revealed. It exists in nature, but still, this crisis isn't for the vinegar thing. It has to do with all kinds of other things that are balanced in nature. Um, I, in uh, thoughts, deeds as well, but this we can check. Why is he, UNESCO, all these systems, international systems, that at least in their acts, no one will do anything to the other, something bad to the other. The fact that they, like in gangs fighting, it's one thing, but not to have those big um, fights. They need to just discover that we're doing it with the help of thought. Europeans, Americans, Africans, depends how they think about one another. The war won't be atomic, but rather thought. That's what the Dogomagog war is that they're talking about. So what will you do? Tell me. Discover soon this network. <laughs> What are you going to do that I don't love you? It's easiest to think about you that I don't know. <coughs> Billions of people, let them disappear. It'll be cleaner here, it'll be better. And they will think like that about me. Then what are we going to do? We're getting into this new stage now where we need to correct our hearts together, all together, in mutual responsibility. Otherwise, our lives will be over. So what is singing in public? Connecting everyone together. Praying for many means I pray for everyone. I have no choice. In order for me to, in the beginning, this one, because it's a Kabbalistic prayer, I need to pray for my whole heart, for the most inner, who do you mean? I will feel only this at the beginning, that it's protection for me. 
If I think about them well, say there is a problem in my in my marriage or my with my in-laws. How do I correct this problem in the family? In the family, it's something else. In the family, you need to work in a mutual manner. I'm talking about social. The people is something that's connected after all. They have borders, like a family. The border is clear. How many people in the family? Where are, the, where are the borders of Israel? Let's say I have a problem with my salary and it has to do with my workplace. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter what. How do you pray? You think. Think from the heart that others will be better off. A prayer is the work of the heart. So I'm verifying now. She has a personal problem. She says Nitsa has a problem with her salary. How does it it has to do with her workplace and her business. I see that my prayers until now weren't answers. I, I want to get a prayer. You can't pray for yourself, so how can I do it? What's our vote? That only one can pray for the other. If they pray for you, it'll help you. And if you do somersaults, it won't help you. That's how it is. Why? <laughs> because that's how the world is built. That's how the world is becoming revealed, that it's integral. If I have these spider webs, this uh, I'm in the spider web of the network, what happens to me? It happens to me as a result of all my connections with everyone around me. They are actually d determining my situation and not me, myself. So if, say, a person is in some kind of trouble with his like wages or salary, can he turn to people, friends, and say to them, help me with a prayer, pray for me? What, how, how will they hear him? Pay us and we'll pray. Okay, clear. It's uh, not real, but rather, how can you obligate them? How can you obligate them? And it has to be constant. They have to pray the whole day. That would be best. All day long for everyone. And each person needs to do that. A family, if it can maintain itself like that, really exists well in a certain framework, more or less, the way they're dependent on the environment. But if everyone's thinking about everyone there, then if families tied together, then yes. In our time, of course, the crisis has come in there as well. We have no choice except to open a, a true picture for a person, where we are, what network is becoming revealed, the network of connections between us, how much this network is negative, negative, and its revelation is revealing our uncorrected relations, meaning this revelation is bringing us bad, a crisis that we see, that we feel. <coughs> And that's why we call it like that. And we have no choice except to see with our own eyes, with my own eyes, I have to see this network, how much I'm dependent on everyone, how much they're choking me. Really, each one is holding my uh, infusion. And I'm not doing anything. I have a drip here. I have the uh, drug of life, and there's a pipe, and uh, there's all kinds of things to block it off, and if somebody's blocking it off, then he's stopping the drug of life, and I die. How will I obligate seven billion people? Let's say in the meantime, it's not seven, it's circles, it's opening gradually. <coughs> How will I obligate them? to want to, against their nature, their egoistic nature, to close it off. How can I obligate them that they will hold the drug of life? In other words, prayer, the prayer of many, has to come from a place of genuine concern 
not because somebody asked me or told me, but truly because I care about this person. The integral education has to raise a person to the degree of an angel. You said, how do I cause people to feel good and open the, the faucets of abundance? So what's the answer? Through education. I'll educate them. I'm an individual. Yes, of course. Start with yourself. So myself, great. What do I have to do to cause others that in their heart, their heart will be soft in my direction, so <coughs> they will give me love, they'll open the abundance. Let's say I have a problem with salary or health, it'll pass. What do I have to do to penetrate their hearts and transform it from being against me to for me? What do I have to do? You have to, first of all, yourself, learn the system. I'm learning it from you. So what do I have to do? Learn the system itself. You're saying the spider web, yes. How we're connected there. All the laws of connection. All the laws of uh, connection between everyone. And after that, we need to know what depends on you and what's not dependent on you, what depends on me. That's what I'm asking, the entire world. So what do we have to do? You have to judge the world to merit. How promote this method? Promote this method, how to be connected in a good, pleasant manner so that this method will come from nature and not because someone suggested it from his head. But rather, we're learning it from nature, how we're connected to one another, how we're dependent on one another, and how we can correct ourselves and enhance ourselves through the society that we will build and exist in it properly. The society, in an artificial manner, we're building it. It will influence everyone in such a way that we'll all begin being connected in a good way to each other. We'll think about each other. We'll treat each other like themselves. I feel the other like I feel myself. It all depends on the correct social education. So in other words, if I, with my whole heart, pray that people will treat our lives, uh, the system that we exist in, it's called softening their hearts. If I teach them about the network, yes. If I have a difficulty in my life, like she gave an example of salary, and I want to pray that this difficulty will pass, if you ask for it yourself, you probably won't get anything. But it has to be systematic. You need to understand that you're difficulty is the blockage in the general system. Everyone's uh, blocking you off, and you have to ask everyone to open up their ducts, and then also your personal blockage will open up. Is that called praying correctly? Yes. If I think with my whole heart and want it to happen like that, truly for everyone, and everything will open up and flow, that's called that I learned how to pray correctly to get good feedback. Yes, but it's not enough. What are you doing to operate others in this manner? What you do, I'm thinking about them. Not that you're thinking, you also have to activate them. Okay, you know, I'm limited in my abilities to the extent that I can. <coughs> you know what? Run as if your life depends on it. I'm not obligating you to do anything. The moment you get the correct education, what do you mean the education? To bring these insights that you're speaking of, from that moment, you begin to run by yourself to tell them about the mutual connection, about the necessity. That's clear. There's another aspect I want us to have time. There's a special prayer called women's prayer. We've known throughout history that a prayer, I don't know how to explain it. I feel as a man, I'm not a woman, and correct me if I'm wrong. I feel with men, everything goes difficulty. But a woman's prayer from all the stories in the Bible, when a woman pray, pray, prays, it's, it opens things up. So what is this thing, woman's prayer? It's a deficiency, a more internal, more in-depth deficiency, more closer to nature. 
the lacking in connection with it's a desire that things will work out, that everything will be good, that everything will be okay. A woman usually doesn't run after millions, even though today it's like that as well. She first of all is thinking about the foundations of life, that everything will be good and calm and health, family, food. The kids will be organized, the foundations of life. Therefore, these prayers are first are received first because it's not exaggerated. It's about basic necessities. That's one thing. The other thing <coughs> that a woman that prays a woman's desire is a desire for for peace and not war, because in order to in order for all her desires for perfection in the family, health, food, and good for the children, she needs to have peace. Therefore, she wants to have the correct, correct connection between everyone because she feels that in that <coughs> today and tomorrow, that her family is dependent on it, and therefore her prayer is that kind of prayer. A woman also feels herself not like a man that jumps up, but she feels from the beginning weak. And that's the truth, that we're all weak against nature. And a woman is, she naturally submisses, submisses herself to nature. And that's the correct way for a man to start praying. He has to break the macho part of him, and that he's capable of breaking everything. And at the end of the day, until he breaks, and then he truly reaches the breaking of his heart. A woman doesn't need that. She's closer to the true prayer. There's a lot more here, but at the end of the day, from lack of time, still I want to ask one more thing. This thing about prayer, we spoke on the individual level, but in the vision of the prophets, it says, because my house is a prayer house for all the nations. It also has a very global aspect prayer. It talks about all of humanity. What does it mean that in the future my house will be a prayer house of prayer. All the nations will ask only one thing, that love will permeate between everyone, between everyone, between all the nations. Love, bestowal, love thy neighbor as thyself without any difference, and that will be called the house of God. <laughs> and this entire structure will be called the house of God, and there is where we will discover this upper force of nature that created everything, all the degrees, so that we would be able to close the end of creation with its beginning. That's it. Therefore, truly, at the end of the day, now the crisis is global in the whole world. <coughs> We're approaching this understanding that we can't have a partial correction. Is somebody just getting along there or here? But rather, the entire world has to connect together to that same trend, to unite, to be mutually responsible and reach love thy neighbor as thyself, in that a person is different from a creature. Our time is up. I'd still like to hear one last sentence that I'll hold in my head for all our viewers. What is the correct prayer in your eyes in one sentence? Everything can be attained through prayer for the entire world. Thank you, Rav Lightman. Thank you, Nitsa Mazuz. Thank you for being with us. Pray for one another. Until next time, all the best. New life.